Hi, this is Mrs. Nelson. We're looking at the illustrative math for seventh grade. This is unit one, lesson two, corresponding parts and scale factors. The objective states in a pair of figures, I can identify corresponding points, corresponding segments, and corresponding angles. I can describe what the scale factor has to do with a figure and its scaled copy. We're going to look just to the lesson summary today to see if we can gain what we need to from the lesson summary about our objectives. First things first, for annotation, we're going to number our paragraphs. Normally bullet points are part of the paragraph, so they'd be part of paragraph one, but we're going to go ahead and number those. Uh, as well, just so it makes it easier to communicate about where we are in the text. Paragraph 1 says a figure and its scaled copy have corresponding parts or parts that are in the same position in relation to the rest of each figure. These parts could be points, segments, or angles. For example, Polygon 2 is a scaled copy of Polygon 1. So I circled some content vocabulary. Before I go on, I want to make sure I understand those words. If I don't, I can utilize the glossary or other context from other lesson summaries to gain insight as to what these mean. We're already really familiar with scaled copy. The word that comes up new today is corresponding parts, and it's identified, its definition is identified right there in the text. It says corresponding parts are parts that are in the same position in relation to the rest of each figure. So if we're considering points, segments, and angles, we're looking for points that are in the same position in another figure, um, segments in the same position, and angles in the same position relative to the rest of the figure. Um, it says that uh, Polygon 2 is a scaled copy of Polygon 1. Uh, paragraph 2. Each point in Polygon 1 has a corresponding point in Polygon 2. For example, point B corresponds to point H. Again, with corresponding, that means they're in the same relative location. So point B and point H are in the same relative location of their respective polygons. And point C and point I are also corresponding points. Again, they show up in the same position relative to the rest of the shape in their respective polygons. Paragraph 3 says each segment in Polygon 1 has a corresponding segment in Polygon 2. For example, segment AF, which is right here, oops, uh, corresponds to segment GL. So I can look again to the same location and identify that pretty quickly where GL would be located. Uh, paragraph 4, each angle in Polygon 1 also has a corresponding angle in Polygon 2. For example, angle DEF, and I locate that right here, angle DEF, oops, it's bringing up my line tool. Um, if I look to the same location, I'm going to see that that's the same angle as angle JKL in polygon 2, and that's exactly what the text says. Angle DEF corresponds to angle JKL. Paragraph 5, the scale factor between polygon 1 and polygon 2 is 2 because... All of the lengths in Polygon 2 are two times the corresponding lengths in Polygon 1. So Polygon 2 is a scaled copy of Polygon 1, that's what we read, and it is uh, has a scale factor of 2 because all of these segments are twice as long in Polygon 2 as they are in Polygon 1. 3 and 2 tenths times 2 does in fact equal 6 and 4 tenths. We can see if we double 2 right here, we'd get 4. If we double 2 right here, we'd get 4. So all of those segments are twice as long in polygon 2 as they are in polygon 1. Um, the angle measures, we're right here in that paragraph, the angle measures in polygon 2 are the same as the corresponding angle measures in polygon 1. For example, the measure of angle JKL, so this right here, excuse me, JKL, is the same as the measure of DEF. If JKL opened wider or opened less than DEF, then the overall shape of polygon 2 would not be the same shape as polygon 1. So the angle measures cannot change um, when we're tr creating a scaled copy. Those angle measures stay the same. What changes or what dilates are the segments, the lengths of the segments. They can get longer or shorter depending upon whether we're making it two times bigger or four times bigger or if we're making it half the size or whatever our scale factor might be. Again, our objective states in a pair of figures, I can identify corresponding points. We did that. Corresponding segments. We did that. Corresponding angles. We did that. I can describe what the scale factor has to do with a figure and its scaled copy. So the scale factor tells us how many times longer 
each of the segments should be that make up our scaled copy. All right, thanks for watching.